dial here on the end, okay? I want you to just play with that dial. Just turn it and tell me what you feel. Huh? It clicks. Good. Every time it clicks, that is where you put a fletch on. Now, there should be a, uh, a marker that looks distinct um, to tell you where to put the first fletch on. So either it would be um, a pen mark, or on my one, for example, I have a line here. Yes? Can you guys see that? You might have something different. Yes? You want that, you want to start on that marker. Does anyone not know what I'm talking about? Please say it now. Okay, we're here to learn. Okay, now, the, the, the large black fletches like you have, sir, the ladies have over here, you have the ability to fletch a three fletch, a four fletch, and a six fletch. We only want three fletch. So you'll see there, there's a number on the dial, and you push down to say three fletch. So, are we on three? There, yeah, three. So now, we, we are now on point eight already, look. We've gone through all of that, now we're gonna start fletching, okay? What I want to do first, I'm going to put my arrow into my jig, alright, and it's going to sit there, it's going to look like this. You should have like a, uh, somewhere where the arrow is going to rest, and it's going to be diagonal, most of them. That one's going to be flat, the rest will be diagonal like this, okay? Your one should be, your dial should be near, near the table. Your fletch, your fletch is not flat. No, yeah, there you go. There you go, right, good, okay? So we're all going to be 45 degrees, okay? So we are there. Now, every time I twist, the shaft is going to move and it's going to click. That's going to be my second fletch. I'm going to twist, click, my third one. When I click again, I'm back to the beginning, okay? So that's how it's going to be. What I need to do now, I'm going to find some fletches that I want. All right. So up here, we have an array of different colors, shapes, sizes, okay? The longer, just trying to remember this as a guide, the longer your arrow, as a guide, the longer your fletch, okay? Yes, sometimes we can put short fletches on arrows, but for the purposes of today, if you have a long fletch, so adults, guys and girls who are tall, we're gonna have a longer arrow, you go for the longer fletches. The younger ones, you go for shorter ones, okay? Every compartment where the fletches are, um, that's where they belong. Try not to mix and match, because they are, they are together in the right size, and they are either left wing or right wing, okay? So I'm going to choose these ones, just as a random thing, okay? Now, I chose one yellow and two white. You can choose all the same colors if you want. You can choose three different colors if you want. The norm, however, is to have one crest fletch. We call it a crest fletch. Does anyone know why the odd one is called a crest fletch? Trivia quiz. Is that the one that goes against the bow? Um, no. Well, we don't want it to go against the bow, firstly. But why is it called a crest fletch? Why is the odd one out? Did you have a hand up? No? Oh, no, but so you... Go on. You knock it the crest way up. But why is it called <laughs> the crest fletch? The way you crest the arrow. Okay, all right. So, back in the day... Oh, go on, my man. Is it the top of the arrow? No. Top of my arrow is here. We call that the top, yeah? yeah. Good try. Now, let me explain. Back in the day... Is it to recognise the tribes? Well, where does... Uh, you're kind of in that warm area. Right, let me explain. Before modernization, pre-industrial era, okay, we used feathers to fletch our arrows. Where do we get feathers from? Yes. What type of birds? Yes. Turkey, some chicken, roosters, okay. If you had a rooster come into the room, okay, the rooster is the, the big boss. How do we know the rooster from everyone else? The 
rather than the way he walks. The feathers, okay? What do we call this area? The crest. So they would take feathers that were brightly colored off the top or maybe the chest of the cockerel, pluck them out and use those ones. Okay, so that's where the name came from. And some of you are correct. That is the odd color that tells us which way round to put the arrow on when we shoot. Now, that is more relevant for recurve archery when we're using plastic veins such as these. Okay, these plastic veins here, okay. When we're using feathers, you have a little bit more play. You don't have to have an odd color. I'm just doing it for demonstration purposes. You can have all the same color. For example, here we go. See, there's no, where, the, where is the crest fletch here? You don't really know. And it doesn't matter why, because when you shoot these arrows, the feather is very forgiving. When it goes past the, the bow handle, the feather can just go down and it comes back up again. It won't cause a lot of friction against the bow, okay? So this is more for traditional archery, horse archery, um, things like that, okay? Right. I'm trying not to go off tan tangents here. Okay, so I'm going to first um, glue my stress fletch, okay? Here's my clamp. You've got a clamp? Take your clamp off your jig. Open and close it. Have a feel of the pressure. Okay, there's your clamp. On your clamp, you should have one side with some numbers or some measurements. Yeah, who cannot see that, right? Those are important because we're gonna make sure that we pick a point and we're going to use that each time, okay? You guys will get a jig, don't worry guys, okay? So, I'm going to, okay, let's do this. I want my fletch, okay. Generally, we're going to leave about, let's say an inch minimum from where the knock is to where my fletch will start, okay. I want to have my fletch start around there, okay. It's very rare to see people knocking fletches right up against the knock. Doesn't really happen. Why? Because when you're pulling the arrow, you're going to have this fletch right kind of tickling your face or your nose or something. You need to leave a little bit of a gap. Let's say about an inch or so, okay? Somewhere there. So that's going to be my first one. So what I do is put my arrow in my jig. I take my clamp. I'm going to slide my feather into the clamp. Now... At the base of my feather, how can I draw this? Okay. Right. I will try and let you see this, okay? We're going to look at the feather from the back now, okay? We're looking at it from the back. So here's my knot, for example. We're looking down the arrow this way. One feather is going to be looking like this, curved that way, and it's going to have a little platform like that coming out. Another one's going to be going the other way, and it's going to look like that. This is the base. It's like a flat surface. Okay? <clears throat> now, I'm trying to remember which is right wing and left wing. Right wing, left wing. So when it looks like this, this is going to be right wing, and left wing fletch. Remember we talked about it has to be facing the same way. When I put my clamp onto my fletch, I want it to go all the way, but I want to feel the base underneath. Okay? Let me just bring this around so you can see here. You can see all the way underneath. You can't... So you want the bigger end to the base of the clamp. Right, so... I put it all the way in, the clamp is doing the job of keeping it there. Now, the back of your clamp has a magnet and your jig has a magnet. I'm going to apply that back on. There's no glue on here, so I'm not worried about that. I'm going to make sure that I push my clamp all the way down to the base so it can't move any further. Okay? Now, I want to check two things. 
Is all of the base of the fletch in contact with the shaft? Or is it coming off, number one? And number two, is it far enough up that I'm happy, okay, with it, all right? So for me, it's not far enough up, so I'm going to push it up a little bit further. And I'm just going to remember where it is. So there, it's touching. So I'm happy with that. Okay, so this is all preparation now. Now I'm going to fletch. Yeah, any questions so far? You're with me so far, yeah? Take the glue off. What's the key word with the gluing? Drops. Drops, okay? Drops, beads, okay? When you are fletching, let's say we're looking at the base of the fletch here, up close, okay? Literally, it's like this, drop, gap, drop, gap. Because when you press down, it's all going to merge together, all right? Again, if you put too much on, when you press it down onto the shaft, it's going to come off the sides and the front and everywhere. It's going to be a bit messy, okay? So make sure that you just have drops with some gaps in, okay? So if it, if yes. Um, if the base is sitting, if it's not sitting flat on the arrow, what do you do? So there is, your, most jigs have the ability to change the angle. So let's say, for example, the end, the lower end of my fletch is on, but the front end is off a little bit. Yeah. That means that if that happens, call me or call Bula and we just straighten it up. There's two dials on your uh, on the top of the jig which allows the, for angle. Okay, and there's a reason for having that to let us shoot kind of uh, what they're called helical, yeah, yeah. left or right. Okay, so so drops, drop gaps, just like that. When you're applying, you. A little bit of a squeeze and then it will start to come out okay so I have my drops on there now I've got to be careful okay I don't want to open my clamp I'm going to press it down I've measured it everything is in place you don't want it to move now I'll press it down push it to the base and now I just apply it to the clamp and then it's holding in place there okay that's the first fletch give it say three or four minutes okay until you're going to take it off, all right? The other issue with too much glue is if you get it onto the clamp and you try and open it up, it will seize up a little bit, okay? <clears throat> so, I'm going to give that a couple of minutes. Any questions so far, okay? Yes? Um, so, you put it on here, you've got these gauges there, 0, one, yeah. minus 1. How do you know the aim to adjust that to make sure it's running not parallel? So, we, yeah, we want the arrow to run straight and then we want the fletch to also run straight on the shaft so okay so if they're slightly off some of these jigs will come with a little um, allen key where you can loosen it and you can adjust it okay while this is drying why would i want on my shaft why would i want my arrow to be slightly diagonal why would i want to fletch my arrows slightly off center so for example if this is my shaft we're looking at the shaft from the top okay so instead of it being straight one ends here and it's going off diagonally like that and then each of them are like that first of all we are what will that do to the flight it will straighten yeah. up the flight so as it's as it's spinning because it's like a, a rifle bullet exactly so it, so it, so it creates a turbine effect yeah if you think of it like this, arrow is flying, the wind is coming here like this, it's going to hit this edge first. And then what will happen? It's going to push it that way like a propeller. So if you look at some slow-mo videos of arrow flight, search it on YouTube, you will see the arrow actually turning in mid-air. Okay? It's not actually flying. It's flying straight in a straight path, but the arrow itself is actually rotating. So this is actually a good thing because it creates a center of gravity which keeps the arrow centered and flying straight. You think of a bullet, a torpedo, something like that. Something that rotates, okay? Now again, making sure you want to make sure you have um, the correct type of flex for that, left or right wing, okay? But we won't get into that too much today. We're just going to have them straight, okay? So, 
let's see if I can take this one off. One, there we go. All right, so that's glued on. The base is connected. All right, so that's on. Now what I need to check here is a bit of a strength test that there's enough glue along the base. So what you, before I go to my second one, I'm gonna do something called topping and tailing. Okay, topping and tailing. All it means is a drop of glue on the front of the fletch and a drop of glue on the back. Okay, so again, from here, a couple of drops here, just a couple of drops here, okay? What I'm doing, I'm trying to seal the front and the back. Why? Stop so it looks good, eh? Stop it ripping off. Stop it coming off. The wind is coming here. Over time, if there's any type of opening, the wind will get underneath it and start pulling your fletch up, okay? This is one way to keep the fletch down. There's also a collar that I'm going to put on at the end, which is literally uh, a collar around the front, which will also keep your fletch down. It will look like this. You can see this here. See this here? Can't see the tip of the, the fletches, yeah? So we'll do something like that, all right? So top and tailing, a couple of drops, that one's done. Okay, second fletch. So I haven't moved my dial yet, so I put it back in. I want to move my dial towards me. If, you, if I move my dial away from me, the fletch is going to hit the jig. So, towards me. And it will naturally click in. Once you feel the click, now you do your second fletch. Same thing. If you've remembered where your measurement is, always remember this. Never apply glue until you've measured your fletch with your previous one. Don't just think, oh yeah, that's where it was. You might be one little bit, one, a little bit out, okay? So here, I'm going to apply there. See, I'm a little bit low. So I push up a little bit. Tip it down. Okay, requires a little bit of sensitivity. Okay, that's in line. Same again. Beading, drops, okay, a little bit of pressure. And you just Just drops, that's all you need, okay? Again, let the magnet now take, take its, its course. So you just bring it close, base onto the dial, magnet will catch, and then you stick it on, and then you're there. Okay, so that's the second fletch. <clears throat>